The amide bond is very important. And you need an hydrophobic <coughs> substituent at this position. So here we have an ethyl group. And you see you have a medium-sized ring here. That's very unusual. Then we have this atropoisomer ring, again unusual. Plus this, which actually guide the uh, atropoisomer is here because it's because of this center here that we have one uh, uh, isomer uh, at this level of the, uh, of the two aromatic ring. So I was attracted by the interesting structure of this compound and also, of course, by the biological activity. And we decide to study that to prove a little bit the concept that uh, uh, was discussing uh, before. And first, we had to design a library with of possible analogs with the help of modeling. And we did that. I won't talk to you about the modeling. But we came to the following proposal. We should make compounds of this type. We have three points of diversity here, this, this part here, which can be vary, but also at the level of the aromatic ring. It can be carbocycle, it can be heterocycle. We can have substituent on this. We can have variation at this point. We can have variation at this point, although this should be anyway something very hydrophobic. And we can have variation at this point. That gives a lot of possibility to make analogs. But that should be easily done by conventional chemistry from a scaffold. Which scaffold? Well, we decide to make this very simple compound. It looks very simple. It's a pyrrole. We have a substituent of nitrogen, a bulky substituent probably at this point here. That's what we want. And then here, we should allow for coupling. And we selected, of course, an iodine, which allow for cross-coupling with boronic acid and things like this. So that's the privileged scaffold. I thought at that time that it should be very easy and maybe conventional chemistry. I realized that there are many things on pyrrole chemistry, but one, two, three substitute pyrrole, that's a nasty guy. Because you make a substitution pyrrole, you go on two. The next one go on five. And the next one will go on three or four. But never one, two, three. So we had to develop a new synthesis of that. And of course, that was our interest. And this synthesis is shown here. I will go rather quickly because it's rather simple. You start with it. Of course, a product which is very simple, you just cinnamaldehyde, make the tosinimide here, and then, I'm sorry, there is a hydrogen which should not be there. Uh, then you add here the anion of this uh, acetylenic uh, uh, ketal, and you treat with HI, and you get this compound. Very simple, you can prepare kilograms of this compound. And that's the first scaffold. Now you oxidize this, and you get an aldehyde. You can oxidize the aldehyde to a carboxylic acid or any derivative of a carboxylic acid, and you have other scaffolds. You know, so it's a generation of scaffold that we have uh, made here. And we decide to study the aldehyde and uh, to look at the coupling. That took a lot of, at that time a lot of time, it about eight months before we found the right condition because this was not known on Pirol, and there are Pyrroles, as you know, a very active group here. And uh, th these are the results. Now, using this condition here, we got very high yield of the coupling product, including with a mesethyl group here. And you know, this mesethyl, of course, shows that even steric interest did not prevent the coupling to occur. And we have published that already several years ago. But more recently, we went to the real compound. That's the one we want uh, to, to make in order to prove the principle. And here, the nitrile that we use is this one here. So you make the tosinimide uh, using the simple chemistry here. Then you add your uh, anion of the acetylene, get this compound, treat it with hydrogen iodide, and here's the scaffold. In four steps, you can generate the scaffold with now the very hydrophobic substituent at this position. And the postdoc had to go back to India 
And uh, he told me, I am not going to use nitroboronic acid. That's the one we had used in our model reactions. But I will take the amino boronic acid. And I told him, well, you are losing your time because, of course, it will kill the metal uh, when you couple in the presence of the amino group. Then he came back the next day and he said, I have 47% of, uh, of uh, coupling reaction. So it just shows that you should all, not always follow the advice of your supervisor. And uh, uh, I was quite happy, of course, to have that because it saves some time. And, uh, you remove that, you make the carbamate, and uh, we measure then the activity and we reproduce the activity of the uh, Rasilina micromolar. And of course, that's a racemic compound. So you realize immediately that now we are able to make, by very simple method, we start with that, we vary all the argyl group, and then we decorate with whatever we want and we can make a huge collection of this molecule and measure the biological activity. But that's another story that I'm not going to talk about now because I want to show you the principle here. So that was the first success in this area. Now, since we made new chemistry, we start to think about the possibility of using this for other purposes, and you can see different possibilities here. So we start with the styrene compound that they show you. If you couple, couple so with something like this with a double bond, you can do ring closing metathesis, and you have access now to tricyclic uh, heterocyc or pyrrole derivative, uh, benzoendol, if you like. Uh, if you have an NH2 here and aldehyde there, you can access to pyridine and to pyridone if you have a carboxylic acid and an anemium group there. So this is variation uh, which benefit from the new chemistry that we have developed in the context of this project. Okay, now I go to another topic, in the same, of course, uh, context. We got interested in mechanism-based inhibitors of serine proteases. And you know serine proteases from a class of widespread, well-characterized protein in many cases, not in one case that we are going to look at, but uh, there are many other examples where we know very well the protein. And they have spectacular, spectacularly di diverse uh, uh, physiological role. And you see some of the function that they can exert. Okay. Also, and this we knew because for years, about 15 years, we have been very active in the field of uh, penicillin binding protease, and so the antibiotics uh, related to penicillin and cephalosporin. And we had a big project in collaboration with biologists, and one of the main players in the field of the study of this enzyme was my colleague Jean-Marie Giesen at the University of Liège, and uh, he, has, uh, he was one of the uh, persons who really uh, proposed uh, the mechanism uh, of the of this uh, uh, cleavage of uh, the protein by using uh, serine hydroxide. One needs, a, sorry, one needs a, a catalytic triad, nucleophilic serine residue, a catalytic histidine oriented by an aspartate oxyanion hole. And the kinetics of inhibition is shown here. You form first by an equilibrium the Michaelis complex, and then you have the acylation step, that's where the beta-lactam ring, for instance, is open if you have a penicillin. And then, in some case, if you have a resistance, for instance, there is a K3 step where the inhibitor is degraded and you regenerate the enzyme. And of course, then in that case, you have resistance. So a good inhibitor will have a KK2 much bigger than K3. This we knew very well and we are very familiar with that, and we thought we could approach the problem of the property in convertase as possible targets for cancer therapy by taking as model these beta lactime antibiotics. And uh, I'll show you uh, why we are interested in this compound. These proteins are calcium-dependent serine proteases. They are responsible for the maturation of a protein precursor by a cleavage which is sequence-specific at the carboxy terminal of a basic amino acid. 
So you cleave with these enzymes, and then your protein becomes active. It's like switching on the light. So that's what these, these enzymes are doing. And these uh, uh, pro protein converters, they are well-known cancer-associated proteins, growth factor, growth factor receptors, integrins, matrix, metal metalloproteins, and so on. So as I say, they act as master switches at different level of tumor development and progression, including metastatic ability. And they are overexpressed in some cancer tissue. The problem in this case is that except for furin, which has been uh, crystallized and for which we have an X-ray analysis, very little is known about the tri tridimensional structure of the PC and the nature of the active site. So what should we do? Well, we decide to start with, from natural products. And we say, well, let's look at some of natural products which are known to interact very well with serine proteases. And these are the penicillin and the cephalosporin. So if we are not too restricted, we could say, let's target very broad swaths of the chemical space but a specific aspect of the chemical speak, the one known to overlap with a specific area of the biological space, which is the area of penicillin binding protein. So that was our approach here. And of course, we use then the beta-lactam pharmacophore penicillin and cephalosporin, or PNM or monobactams, as a template. That would be the template because we know that these are potent inhibitors of bacterial transpeptidase and beta-lactamase, which are serine proteases. Okay? So that gives you the basic idea behind that. So, back to chemistry. So, we are interested in beta-lactam. Well, I know very well beta-lactam chemistry. It's very well documented. We knew a lot about that. But this chemistry is not always easy. And there may be a, a limitation in to access to diversity because we are a small ring. So, why putting one more carbon? If you put one more carbon, it's easier chemistry. But very few, if any, gamma lactan have shown to inhibit serine protease. We have proven that, Jack Baldwin have proven that, some industry have proven that. We all try unsuccessfully to develop antibiotics with this five membrane. Even when the lactam was chemically extremely reactive, it didn't show any biological activity. Okay, so let's put the nitrogen in it. Well, is a beta lactam. There have been rather little study, and the only example that we have in literature, they are loaded with phenyl group and so on. So, no interest for studies in the context of biological activity. And this one, we had a little study. So the azagamelacta, except from some work from Eli Lilly in the United States. And of course, you would have more opportunities for diversity because you can introduce diversity here, here, and here, and maybe even here, using radical chemistry. OK, little study. Carbo derivative, the uh, gamma lactams were inactive. What about? This one, of course, we could have started again to make synthesis or analogs and antibiotic test them and so on, but we chose a different approach. We talked with our colleague or rescuer in this program, and that was George Deef, and in this beta lactam program that we had, he was responsible for modeling, calculation, and so on, and he developed a model for the active site of a serine protease, which is shown here, where you have here, formamide re represents the peptide backbone, so that's the oxyanion hole here, that's the serine residue, well, it's a methanol, but uh, it's a serine residue which attacks the carbonyl group, that becomes longer. We have a relay with some amine, it could be stidine, it could be lysine, and also tyrosine with the OH group here, which transferred the proton. 
So that's the transistor thin model for the oscillation of serine residue of a DD peptidase or beta lactamase, which has been uh, published in the past and also has been successfully used for the design of new beta lactam analogs with a lot of success. So we trusted them very well. Uh, so I asked George to make this calculation. And here are the results. And something came, on, came out of this calculation which was quite surprising. As soon as you introduce, let's take the uh, usual ring of uh, uh, antibiotics, so you have this four and five member ring, that's the activation energy. You see 16 here, these have two different figures depending on the mode of calculation uh, that we did, especially the, the base that we used. And look, four and five. You go from 16 to 26. That explains that these compounds were not at all uh, reactive uh, and they didn't show any biological activity at least. Now, you put nitrogen here, it goes down to nine. You go here from 26 to 19, almost the one you find in the beta lactam. I don't want to go through that, but ev at every line here, you have the same thing. Very surprising. We didn't, we didn't predict that, of course. Now, the question is why? I could ask you the question. Why is it? The answer is not so easy. But what we believe from the calculation, because the calculation allows us to look at the change of geometry during the ring opening of the lactam. And during this ring opening, this position, at this position here, you have a motion like this, pyramidalization. So it's like this and it opens. Now if you have carbon, carbon doesn't like that. You know. You need energy to open the tetrahedron. But nitrogen goes like this, as you know. So it could be that. It could be that. I don't want to say that we have a proof for that. But at least it's an attractive possibility that is due to a pyramidalization. Then we went back to literature and we noticed the following. I hope you can see it's in yellow, it's not very visible. This is uh, one of these compounds. Five, 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 you see, so it belongs to this category here. You have a side chain here, which is not the side chain of the natural product, but this compound, this class of compound, was found in nature. And it was found in some streptomyces and extracted by the researchers from uh, Eli Lilly in, uh, in the United States, pharmaceutical company. And uh, they found that when there is a nitrogen there, that's in the natural product, they had a potent antibacterial activity. While with the C here, no activity at all. Not a little activity, no activity, zero. So in some way we have a validation by this class of natural products. And we decide to embark on the synthesis, which is shown here. That is the strategy. I will not show you all the details because that would take too much time, but I first show you the strategy. So the final product should have structure like this. We should have substitution and variation here. We should have substitution, uh, different groups at this position, at this position, maybe there. Uh, so that's the diversity that we are looking for. Of course, we have to design the side chain, but this, of course, will be done, uh, is being done with the help of modeling. Now, the scaffold to reach that should be a compound like this. And it's not one scaffold, but different scaffolds with different number of carbon uh, at this point here. And that should be accessible by ring closing metathesis, as you can see, from a very simple static material. So in a short sequence, you should be able to build a series of scaffolds and then uh, introduce a diversity. There was no example of metathesis with azagamalacta. Short approach, simple chemistry, but new, allows diversity and rapid access to potential inhibitor. Okay, well, that's a slide to impress you. Uh, in fact, you should look only at the red part. The red part, are, that's for the, this first step, you see. 
the red bar are the precursor for the ring closing metathesis on this side and on this side. So you can make one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and more. <coughs> and all the sequence, that's what you should lick. They are short. You see? That's one sequence. That's another one. That's another one. That's another one. Three, four steps. Using some reactions which were known, using some reactions which were not very well studied that we had to adapt it here, and that would deserve maybe some discussion with you. But the purpose of this talk is more to show you the strategy that we follow than to discuss some chemical problems in detail. I will do that only for the last part. 